Pharisee, it says, um, just to trust his cleansing blood, just in simple faith to plunge me neat the healing, cleansing flood. And what, a, what a blessing to know that we're saved by the blood of Jesus. And uh, it, it, what it made me think of is the picture of baptism. We're plunging into Jesus. You know, we're, we're underneath his, his cleansing blood. Now, that, that's, baptism is just a picture. But it's an important picture. You know, oftentimes when people's houses are on fire, they run back in and they grab the pictures. <laughs> you know, because they're precious to them. And uh, as Christians... Uh, what a blessing that the reality is we're in Christ. Uh, we're under the blood. The picture is we get baptized to, to, to say to the world, uh, buried with him through, through death, in the likeness of his death, raised to walk in newness of life. Yeah, what a precious picture it is. Anyway, that, that's what was going through my mind as we sang, sang that song. Second Chronicles. Uh, I want to take some time this morning and look at the life of one of the kings of Israel. His name was Asa. You're probably familiar with some of the first kings of Israel, of course, uh, Saul, and then David, and then Solomon. They ruled for about 120 years, each one about 40 years, and uh, the nation was one nation. But after Solomon, it divided into two nations, Israel and Judah. Now, sometimes it'll be talking about Judah and, say, Israel and, and so on, because it's, you know, they're all Israel, but... Uh, when they divided, Israel never had any good kings. Judah had some good kings. Had some good kings and some bad kings. Well, after Solomon, there were two bad kings, basically, Rehoboam and Abijah. They ruled for about 20 years. And things were not good for Israel. Let's read, uh, starting in 2 Chronicles chapter 14. We're not going to go over their lives, but this is what happens when Asa then becomes king. 2 Chronicles 14 and starting in verse 1. So Abijah slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David. And Asa, his son, reigned in his stead. In his days the land was quiet ten years. And Asa did that which was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God. For he took away the altars of the strange gods and the high places, and brake down the images and cut down the groves, and commanded Judah to seek the Lord God of their fathers, and to do the law and the commandment. Also he took away out of all the cities of Judah the high places and the images, and the kingdom was quiet before him. Asa brings revival to his country. Here was a man who was right with God. Uh, three things happened, at least three. Uh, there was a return to God's word. There, they practiced scriptural separation. There were things they quit doing, things they started doing, and they lived by faith in God. The same things we need today, <laughs> exactly the same things we need today, a return to God's word, scriptural separation, and, and faith in God. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 14 there, verse 2, it said, Asa did that which was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God. Now, how do we know what's good and right in the eyes of the Lord? God tells us. We can't just go by how we feel. Uh, there's people who do what they think is good and right in the eyes of the Lord by how they feel, and man, they do some awful things. Uh, God's Word is what tells us what's good and what's right. Uh, verse 4, uh, I'm sorry, uh, verse, yeah, verse 4, uh, and commanded Judah to seek the Lord God of their fathers and to do the law and the commandments. He, he encouraged them to turn back to God's Word. Uh, look over in chapter 15, verse 3. He says, Now for a long season Israel hath been without the true God, and without a teaching priest, and without law. But when they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and sought Him, He was found of them. You know there's the promise in the Bible that if you'll seek the Lord, He will be found of you. <laughs> God is not trying to hide from you. You want the Lord? Hey, He's ready for you. And seeking God's Word is such an important part of our relationship to the Lord. Let me ask you this morning. What is your relationship to God's Word? You know, for many people, they say they believe the Bible, but they don't actually do much about it. It's just a book on the shelf that they occasionally dust off. I heard of a woman, uh, the pastor had come by, and she was trying to impress the pastor, and uh, she said to her little girl, Honey, go and get that little book. Go and get, I'm sorry, go and get that book that Mommy just loves to read. And her daughter came back with the Coles and Woolies ads. 
<laughs> now, she's trying to impress the pastor, uh, but it wasn't very impressive. Uh, we need a reverent attitude towards God's Word. Listen, just that statement, God's Word, means that it's important. In, um, in, in Psalm 138 and uh, verse uh, 2, God makes a statement about, about His Word. Now, we have no problem saying we should honor the Lord. Uh, Psalm 138 verse 2 says, I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. That's an amazing statement, isn't it? You know, our great God, worthy to be praised. And he says he's magnified his word above his name. You know, for us to know the Lord, for us to know how worthy he is, we have to see what God has revealed of himself. We have to see what God has shown. That's how we know him, is through his word. Uh, we need to have a reverent attitude toward God's word. And by that, I don't mean just toward it as a lump of paper. Uh, you know, I, I know people who, oh, they, they, they treat their Bible with respect, but they never read it. <laughs> the main way to respect God's word is to read it and do it. That's when you know that someone's honoring your word is when they do what you tell them. Uh, you know, I hear and obey kind of thing. If somebody says that and then does nothing, you say, well, they didn't honor my word. But if they do what you say, you know that they've not only heard, but they've responded. We need to have a reverent attitude towards God's word. Uh, in, in Isaiah, I'm just trying to think where I am here. Uh, Isaiah chapter uh, 5 and uh, verse uh, 24, talking to their, their nation. Isaiah 5 and, and verse 24. Therefore, as the fire devoureth the stubble, and the flame consumeth the chaff, so their root shall be as rottenness, and their blossom shall go up as dust, because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts, and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Uh, there's the opposite side. If we do not honor God's word, uh, we will not have God's blessing. Uh, in seeking the Lord... Asa, number one, led his nation to return to God's Word. And they, he, he taught a reverent attitude toward God's Word. If you look in chapter 15 and, and verse 8, uh, the, the prophet had come and, and spoken to, to Asa. When Asa heard these words in the prophecy of Oded the prophet, he took courage and put away the abominable idols out of all the land of Judah and Benjamin and out of the cities which he had taken from Mount Ephraim, and renewed the altar of the Lord that was before the porch of the Lord. So you see positive and negative things. He's, he's getting rid of the idols. Uh, he's renewing the altar. Uh, you know, that's a, a tremendous picture, and that's where many people are at. They're Christians, but they need to renew their altar. Uh, they need to get back to the Word of God. Uh, they need to have uh, those precious times in honoring God's Word. Uh, they renewed the altar. Down in verse 11, it says... They offered unto the Lord the same time of the spoil which they'd brought. They sacrificed on the altar. Uh, they didn't just have an altar. They used it. It was functional. In verse 12, And they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul. They made a commitment. Uh, it, it was so important to them, they said, Yeah, we're going to do it. We're going to do it together. We're going to seek the Lord. Uh, let me encourage you. If you don't... Uh, have a time every day when you're reading uh, God's Word and communing with the Lord. Start today. Don't start tomorrow. Start today. And, and make a commitment. Uh, set a time. Say, I'm going to do this uh, every day for 30 days. <clears throat> and I think you'll find that if you'll do it for 30, 40 days, you'll have a good habit. And, and you need to do it every day. I isn't it strange how hard bad habits are to break and how easy good habits are to break? <laughs> You know, maybe you had a habit in the past of, of spending time with the Lord and letting the Lord speak to you through His Word, and, and you've let it slip. Uh, we need a reverent attitude toward God's Word. And when we have a reverent attitude toward His Word, it'll change what we do. We need regular action. There in chapter 15, verse 3, he says, For a long season Israel hath been without the true God, and without a teaching priest, and without law. And when we reverence God's Word, we're, gonna, we're not going to do without those things. We're going to do with them. Uh, teaching and preaching and uh, you know, studying the Word of God. 
Uh, God's Word doesn't need to just sit on your shelf. It needs to be the guide and goal of your life. Uh, 2 Timothy, study. Ooh, there's a, there's a nasty word for you. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Uh, you know, there, there's, there's action involved when you honor God's Word. Rightly dividing the Word of Truth. Understanding the context and, and how it works. You, know, you can teach anything from the Bible if you take it out of context. I'm, well, I say anything, j just about anything, if you take it out of context. We don't need to know just what the words are. We need to know what they mean. Uh, we need to see the, to rightly divide it and see well, what, did, what was the author saying? What was God saying when, when he wrote this? Uh, in, in Acts chapter 17, the Lord records that the church at Berea was more honorable many of you know this verse it says these were more, more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind sorry it's, it's verse 11 if I didn't tell you they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so therefore many of them believed listen faith comes by hearing hearing by the word of God you read the word of God uh, you're either going to believe or you're going to chuck it out uh, study Study to show thyself approved unto God. Honor it. Uh, memorize it. Meditate on it. Live it and obey it. Plan to do that. Yeah, have a plan to, to read God's Word. Uh, we need to return to God's Word. And I, I, I doubt if this is falling on ears that don't need to hear this. <laughs> uh, I, I know how life goes. Uh, it's easy to, to quit doing the right thing. Uh, we need a heart for God. And that will start by hearing from God. Hearing from God. Secondly, a true return to God's word will bring obedience. If we truly return to God's word, if we're listening to what he has to say, it will cause us to obey him. I used the expression earlier, scriptural separation. The word separation gets kind of beat up sometimes, but it's right. It has to do with holiness. There's things as Christians we should not do. Things we should not say. There's things we should be doing, places we should be, and you know, things we should be participating in because we're, we're saved. In uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 14, uh, verse 3, it talks about some of the things he did. We, we've read it. Let me read it again. He took away the altars of the strange gods and the high places and break down the images and cut down the groves and commanded Judah to seek the Lord God of their fathers and to do the law and the commandments. He took away out of all the cities of Judah the high places and the images, and the kingdom was quiet before him. Uh, Judah changed. There was a difference because they honored God's word. Well, like I said, it was both negative and positive. Uh, look at chapter 15, verse 8. Again, we've read this. It says, when, he heard, uh, when Asa heard these words and the prophecy of Oded the prophet, he took courage. It'll, it'll take courage to do what God wants you to do and put away the abominable idols, and all these things. He, he put away the things that needed to be put away, and then it says, and he renewed the altar of the Lord. Can you see the negative and the positive? That's the way life is. Now, there's things that as you read God's word, you say, ooh, I shouldn't do that. Well, quit. Give it to the Lord. There's other things, oh, the Lord, I should do that. Well, do it. <laughs> Take courage. Be brave. Judah changed both negative and positive. Look down at verse 16. This is exciting. And also concerning Maacah, the mother of Asa the king. He removed her from being queen because she'd made an idol in a grove. And Asa cut down her idol and stamped it and burnt it at the brook Kedron. He wasn't indefinite about this, was he? He didn't say, Mom, uh, I think maybe. No. He said, you're not queen anymore. And, and he went out and destroyed all the stuff she was using to be an idolater. Uh, but the high, listen to this verse 17. The high places were not taken away out of Israel. Nevertheless, the heart of Asa was perfect all his days. And he brought into the house of God the things that his father had dedicated and that he himself had dedicated, silver and gold and vessels. So you see, he's getting rid of some things. He's bringing in other things, things that had a right place in the house of God. But watch out. Verse 17 is there. Uh, okay. There were some things that, uh, that were still going on that, that shouldn't have been. You know, God teaches that faith without works is dead. We're, we're not saved by works. 
but we're saved unto good works. Uh, we don't do them to impress God. We don't uh, do them to, to be saved, but we do them because we love the Lord. That's so important. Uh, you know, none of us are, are worthy to be saved. None of us are worthy of heaven. It's only in Christ. It's only when God looks at us and sees Christ that we're worthy. It's Christ who's worthy. Uh, in 1 Corinthians, let me just read you a couple of verses here. Uh, this idea is in many of the, the New Testament uh, books of putting on, putting off, uh, the change in our life when we get saved. And in 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9, it says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. See, before you're saved, your definition, your, your label is sinner. And it might be a specific sin. He's a fornicator. He's a liar. But when you get saved, your label changes because God changes you. You're justified. He uses some, some great Bible words there. Washed, sanctified, justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. And let me ask you this morning. What is it that the Bible tells us is the sword of the Spirit? The sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. And that's the way, that's one of the main ways God changes us, is by the sword of the Spirit. Man, he gets in there and he says, this has got to go. <laughs> and, you know, out the door it goes, you know. And uh, he, he uses the sword of the Spirit uh, to help us. God's Word tells us what to put on and what to put off. Let me read from Ephesians chapter uh, 4. That expression comes up regularly there. He starts the chapter, Ephesians 4.1 I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you're called. Now, we need to live for the Lord. Then it, down in verse 17, This I say therefore and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind. See, that's where most of us, we spend a lot of time in the emptiness of our mind. <laughs> uh, you know, we think, oh, I had a thought. Uh, must be a good thought. I had it. Um, but he says in verse 18, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that's in them because of the blindness of their heart. Listen, you follow your heart, make that your life verse right there. If you want to follow your heart, you're living in darkness, ignorance, and blindness. Who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that you've heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. I said, that's not the way of Jesus. That you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. God teaches us that uh, there's things to put off, there's things to put on. You see that in the life of Asa. They, they cleaned out uh, the idols and all the things that had to go. Uh, they put in the things that, that were supposed to be in the temple. And uh, we're the temple of God. Uh, we need to return to God's word. Uh, we need to return to scriptural separation. And that's not a proud thing. That's not saying, yeah, look at me, how good I am. It's saying, uh, here's, a, here's a sinner saved by grace. And by God's grace, I want to be like Jesus. And it all comes down to faith in God. Faith in God. We need faith in God. And as you look at Asa's life, you'll find that his faith was put to the test. We haven't read it yet. Uh, 2 Chronicles 14, verse 8. And Asa had an army of men that bare targets and spears. Out of Judah, 300,000. And out of Benjamin, that bare shields and drew bows, two hundred and four score thousand. All these were mighty men of valor. So if you know your numbers, that's just over 500,000 there, all right? There came out against them Zerah the Ethiopian with a host of a thousand thousand. Now by my, my reckoning, that's a million men. And three hundred chariots came unto Mauritius. 
Then Asa went out against him, and they set the battle in array in the valley of Zephathah at Merisha. And Asa cried unto the Lord his God and said, Lord, it is nothing with thee to help, whether with many or with them that have no power. Help us, O Lord our God. For we rest on thee, and in thy name we go against this multitude. O Lord, thou art our God. Let not man prevail against thee. That's a simple, direct prayer, isn't it? Uh, I, I don't see it talking about a lot of ceremony and, and flash. He just got his men together. He had a brief prayer, and off they went. So the Lord smote the Ethiopians before Asa and before Judah, and the Ethiopians fled. And they probably thought, oh, this will be easy. There's two of us to every one of them. They count on the Lord, did they? Uh, and his, his statement is exactly right. Uh, you can help with them that have no power. Help us, O Lord. Uh, you know, that's, a, that's a simple prayer of faith. What a victory. You know, for Christians, uh, salvation is the first act of faith. Uh, there's a, there has to be a time in our life when, when we realize we're lost. And we say, Lord, you're the mighty God. I'm a sinner. Save me. <laughs> For by grace are you saved, through faith. And that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God. But what a blessing. You know, when they asked in the book of Acts, what must we do to be saved? They said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And then in Romans he says, therefore, being justified by faith. Justified means you're, you're right with God by faith. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. What a blessing. Man, you, you need to have peace with God because there's other enemies and you're going, to need to, you're going to need his help when they come. Uh, for the Christian, uh, we need to have that first act of faith in trusting Christ as our Savior. Let me show you Romans 1, verse 16. I want to uh, show you two verses here. Romans 1, verse 16. The Bible says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. That word believe means faith. Let me read it again. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. To, to everyone, he's saying. Now, the, the question you need to ask yourself is, are you saved? Have you believed the gospel? The gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. The Bible says that Christ died for our sins, his death. And he died for our sins because we're sinners. That's just built into that, that statement. The Bible says we're all born sinners. All have sinned. It's, it teaches that we deserve to go to hell. The wages of sin is death. You know, without God, we don't have life. We don't have eternal life. And you know, God did something about that. We deserve our wages, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, paid for by the death of Christ, by the blood of Jesus Christ died for our sins. Christ was buried. And the Bible makes this statement that Christ became sin for us. Christ became sin for us. And he took that sin to the grave. It was buried with him. And then the Bible says that Christ rose again. We often use Romans 10, verses 9 and 10. And there's a reason why we often use it. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And down on he says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know, Asa did that in a, in a physical way. Lord, save us. Uh, we need to do that. We need to have a time when we've done that in a spiritual way, when we say, Lord, save me. Uh, I'm a sinner. I need salvation. Salvation is, is the first act of faith. Well, then Romans 1, verse 17, he says, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. See, we're saved to live by faith. Salvation is not just a one-time thing that, you know, that's the only time you ever do business with God. That's the beginning. That's the new birth he talks about. You're entering into a relationship with him as your, your heavenly father. And the just, well, that's people, therefore being justified by faith, the just shall live by faith. Faith has everything to do with our lives as Christians. Uh, salvation is the first act. Then your life is to be a continuous act of faith in God. 
that's one of the reasons we sang one of the choruses this morning, I just keep trusting my Lord. I've never really noticed that word keep. I just keep trusting my Lord. <laughs> you know, you, you need to trust the Lord, and then you need to keep trusting the Lord. You trust Him for salvation, trust Him for today, trust Him for tomorrow, or trust Him for you know, all the things that uh, come up in your life. In uh, 2 Chronicles, let me get back there. 2 Chronicles chapter 16. I noticed some interesting things about Asa. And uh, his godliness and, and bringing revival to Israel. But as you get toward the end of his life, he has a couple of failures. Uh, we need to keep trusting the Lord. In, uh, in chapter 16... You remember I said Israel had divided into two nations. Well, then after that, they fought each other all the time. Occasionally, they'd make peace and so on, but they were, they were always at each other. Well, Israel was attacking Judah. Israel was attacking Asa's nation. Judah was Judah and Benjamin, the two tribes. And so he hired the Syrians. Well, if you read uh, the first and seconds you know, in, the, in the Old Testament, you'll see that Syria had been hired against, against Israel before. You know, they, they fought other people against Judah and, and Israel, uh, found in, in uh, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 10 against David and so on. They were just guns for hire, basically. What, what do we call that, uh, you know, those kind of soldiers? Um, yeah, and uh, they, they came and they were going to fight against Asa's nation. I'm sorry. Uh, he hired them to fight for his nation. And look in, in verse 7 at uh, 2 Chronicles 16, verse 7. At that time, Hanani, the seer, that's a prophet, came to Asa, king of Judah, and said unto him, Because thou hast relied on the king of Syria, and not relied on the Lord thy God, therefore is the host of the king of Syria escaped out of thine hand. Were not the Ethiopians and the Lubims a huge host with very many chariots and horsemen? Yet because thou didst rely on the Lord, he delivered them into thy hand. God is saying, Asa, you could have trusted me now like you did before. And listen to this next verse. This is a very convicting verse. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Herein thou hast done foolishly. Therefore from henceforth thou shalt have wars. And he's saying, this is going to come back and bite you. Uh, the Syrians are going to attack you next time. Uh, you, you could have taken care of that now, but instead of trusting me, you trusted them. Now, of course, we would never do that. You know, there's times in our lives where instead of trusting the Lord, we're trusting our bank or our doctor or, you know, whatever. Uh, we need to be careful. Uh, God said, I was just looking to bless you. And, and don't you see the picture there? God's just looking. Is there somebody who will believe me so I could just, man, I got all these blessings. I, I just... I just love to bless somebody. Let me, man, oh, Asa, you blew it. <laughs> I would have blessed you. And, you know, I think that happens with us. There's times when God just wants to bless us, but we say, no, no, I'll trust in chariots. I'll trust in, you know, whatever, rather than in the Lord. Um, now, the thing that I noticed here in relation to this was back in chapter 15, verse 17. Did, did you notice it as we read? But the high places were not taken away out of Israel. Nevertheless, the heart of Asa was perfect all his days. As I read that, I thought, now, is this a mistake in the Bible? No, it's not. This is a picture of exactly the way our lives are. Uh, you know, uh, Asa was a man who brought revival to Israel. Asa was a man who, who, who basically trusted the Lord. But in this case and in another case, he didn't act by faith. In fact, God says in verse 9, Here and thou hast done foolishly. It was foolish. God just wanted to bless him through that situation. Uh, later on in verse 12, it says, Asa in the 30 and ninth year of his reign was diseased in his feet until his disease was exceeding great. Yet in his disease he sought not to the Lord, but to the physicians. Now, the Bible doesn't teach that it's wrong to go to doctors, but, but the main one we trust is the Lord, not our doctor. And so here's two failures in Asa's life. And yet God says back in 15, 17, he, the heart of Asa was perfect all his days. Now, you can disagree with me on this, but uh, I believe this is a tremendous picture of the Christian life. 
God calls us to live by faith, doesn't he? We're, we're justified by faith. We're saved by faith. The just shall live by faith. And he's looking to bless us. Yeah, God is looking to bless us as Christians. But watch out. As Christians, the Bible teaches, I want to show you this from Colossians, that we are perfect. That word means complete. We are perfect in Christ Jesus. Colossians chapter 1, verse 28. You can take this home and mull over it a bit more. But Colossians 1, verse 28 says, talking about Christ, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. See, when we stand before God, are we going to stand before God flawed? No, we're going to be perfect in Christ Jesus. Go down to uh, chapter 2 and verse 9. Again, talking about Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. See, our standing before God has to be in Christ. Perfect, complete. In Christ is everything, and we're in Christ. You're complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Now, I believe that's what God is saying here about Asa. Asa had trusted the Lord. Asa was complete. He was, he was, he was right with God. But in these specific things, he didn't trust the Lord. Now, when you get saved, listen, you are complete. You're uh, right with God. But, you know, we can be disobedient as Christians. Oh, pastor, surely not you. <laughs> uh, I was writing somebody the other day, and I said that, you know, the, the main person I struggle with is the one writing this email. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's a battle. Until we're with the Lord, uh, we're in this, these bodies. And, you know, like Asa in, in chapter 16, uh, justified by faith, but still struggling to live by faith. The just shall live by faith. It's like the man in, in the New Testament. He said, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. Don't you identify with that fellow? I mean, it's just the way it is, isn't it? Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. God calls us to live by faith. As Christians, we don't want to live like we're not Christians. You know, we, we talk about being genuine and having a passion and, and so on. Well, listen, if you're a Christian, live like a Christian. Do the Christian thing. Say, Lord, what would you have me to do? Lord, I'm going to trust you. But you know, there's a, there was another verse that came up on this, 2 Chronicles 25, verse 2. And I think this shows the other side of it. And this is a really dangerous place to be. Asa, the Bible says he was perfect with the Lord all, all his days. And yet there was times when he did wrong. Here's another person, Amaziah, chapter, 2 Chronicles 25, verse 2. Amaziah, he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. Again, I could be wrong on this, but I think what God is saying here is a person can live like a Christian and yet not be saved. Now, you can do the right thing. You can do all the Christian things and not have Christ in your heart, not be saved, not have been plunged neath the cleansing flood, you know, the blood of, of Jesus, like we sang about this morning. The Bible says we're not saved by works, not by works of righteousness, which we've done. There's a lot of people who think that religion is the way. Now, I'll do the Christian thing. So, you know, Pastor, what, are the, what, what do I have to do? And they, they want steps one through ten. Okay, I've done that. I'm, everything's taken care of. No, that's not the way it works. You trust Christ by faith, not by works of righteousness. Therefore, being justified by faith. Folks, we need, we need to return to God's Word. And God's Word will help us to be born again. Born again, he says in Peter, by the Word of God. Uh, we need to return to obedience to God's Word. Ephesians, he talks about the washing of water by the Word. God's Word will cleanse us and help us. Uh, we need to return to faith in God. Salvation, but also the just shall live by faith. You know, I want to ask you two questions in conclusion this morning. When the Bible says the just shall live by faith, you need to ask yourself, are you just? Are you just? Now, the importance of that, that question is, only faith in Christ can justify you. It's not your actions. It's not your living. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Uh, let me read you a couple of verses from Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3, starting in verse 22. 
It says, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. For there's no difference. He's been talking about the Jew and Gentile. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation, that's a, a covering through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God, to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. See, there it is. Are you just? The only way to be just is to come to Jesus. Jesus justifies us. He's the justifier. He's the only one who's truly just. Are you saved is what I'm asking this morning. Well, then secondly, are you living by faith? The just shall live by faith. Are you just? Are you living by faith? Hebrews 11.6 says, But without faith, it is impossible to please him. That's a very definite, clear statement, isn't it? Without faith, it is impossible to please him. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Listen, faith is not just talking about what you believe, what you think is true or what you want to do. That's what we think faith is. We think it's something from within us. No, it's from God's word. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. That's faith. You know, Asa was a man who was perfect before God, and yet he left some high places. You ever stop and think about the, the importance of that or what that means? I, I think as Christians, sometimes we have places that we've left that are not right with God. High places were where they worshipped apart from worshipping God. Sometimes they would try and use them to worship God. It'd be kind of like going down to the Buddhist temple and praying to Jesus. I mean, you know, it just it didn't make sense. They left some high places. And in our lives, I think sometimes we leave little places that when we're just feeling a bit contrary with God, we can run and, and have our little getaway from, from God. Maybe it's a, a, a sin. Maybe it's a, an attitude, whatever. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. And uh, we can be saved and, and still have places that are not right in, in our hearts. Are you living by faith? We're saved by faith. We live by faith. And I, I love that verse where he says, The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on the behalf of him whose heart is perfect toward him. Listen, if you're saved, God is looking to bless you. He, he is excited about you living by faith and what he can do with, with you and through you. Now, let's go to him in prayer this morning. Father, thank you so much. Thank you, Lord, as we see these men and, and women in the scriptures that are just like us. Father, that, that want to please you, that want to know you, and yet sometimes they just fall short of, of trusting you. Lord, I pray if there are those here this morning that are not saved, that today would be the day of their salvation. Lord, for us Christians, help us to, to live by faith. Help us not to... Uh, to turn away from you or, or to, uh, to not believe you. Lord, help us today to, to honor and, and trust you. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.